Good morning, my YouTube friends. It's a beautiful day here in uh, Napoli. Absolutely perfect. Well, it's about 27, 28. Now, this video is probably going to make a few people happy because some of my friends and that that I know and I talk around the world about goldfish know that I used to be solely goldfish years ago. Fancy goldfish and uh, I've diversified into shrimp and everything like that. And they said, please, can you do a goldfish only video? So I'm going to do a goldfish only video. So obviously I've got to pass some of my tanks that have got shrimp and guppies and everything in it. But I'll predominantly be, in, or it will predominantly be a goldfish video. Um, now on that, with uh, goldfish and like what I feed them as well, I'm not going to talk a lot about that because I've got something good coming up in the next week or so where I might be hooking up with a certain company and that I, I have promoted on this uh, channel before but we may be getting more involved and I look forward to that, they know who they are and hello and thanks for inviting me to be part of your uh, program and so without further ado I'll grab hold of that and we'll go for a little walk and we'll start up there and we'll out, end out at the ponds out the other side and I'll explain to you the process I go through to raise my fish um, and also, uh, what could you say, get them to selling size. And um, I haven't got a lot here now because I've cleared it out, obviously ready for breeding season. Wish I've had a few good spawn, a few babies coming up, but I always find at the start of the season, you don't get massive spawns, anything like that. Once that weather, the water's still only about 18 here. It's got to be 20, in my opinion, 20 degrees plus to get um, some good spawning action. And if you get into that mid 20s, goldies are going off the head all the time. I must. I'll need two hands for this, so I will go and get something. So this, hopefully you can see that, is the powder food that I make. Very fine powder food. Now I make that out of um, veggie wafers and a few things and also some of the feed that I get from that certain company we're going to talk about hopefully in the next two weeks. So that's what I do, that's how I start them out. And I'll grab that and we'll talk about that a little bit first how I do that. Now I probably could have made some up, would have been a lot easier, but what I do is I get this little fella right here, I take a scoop of water out of there, a little bit more than that, about that much, and I put one tablespoon of that powder in there, and I mix it and I mix it and I mix it around, then I get this syringe and I draw it out and that's what I feed my fry to start with before they can get on to stuff like um, rotifers, daphnia, baby brine shrimp because baby brine at the infant stage is still a little bit too big. In my opinion only they need micro food to start with. So let's start. These are my uh... oh look there's my granddaughters. That's Ray Ray. Sorry, I went off the gold, the goldfish, but that's my axolotl, my granddaughter's axolotl. So I've got some beautiful Ryukans in here. Sorry about the air making too many waves. There's some black ones and all sorts in there. I might do a quick water change later on to try to spur some breeding on. These are my Ryukans. They've had a few nice spawns this year already. Not big. Look at that little beautiful little tricolour there. Calico, mum, she's a big mum, she's the one that pops all the eggs out at the moment. So I've got a nice mixture. I've got one there, if you have a look, it's got white on one side and pure red on the other. Really impressive looking fish. Alright, so if we go around here to everybody's favourites, 
And as I keep saying, they're the most friendly of all the fish I find. There's mum, have a look at her, beautiful. Probably don't need to tell you they're around us. See that one there, that one there is the baby from her, which is carrying the um, tricolour gene, as you can see on top. So cross them back over and I'm hopefully I can get some more tricolours. There you go, mate. Aren't they? I mean, if you've got kids around us, absolutely fantastic with kids. Ah, hello, there's the big black moors down here. Might be able to show up in this angle. Anybody seen any of my videos before, go back over them and you'll see just how big these are. Massive spawn of mops are in. So what I might do, this one here, I'll drop 50%, 50%, 50% today. And then smash them with some blood worms later today. And tomorrow morning, or the next morning, bingo. We should be right. Uh, I'll take you around the adults before we start the tubs. And I'm sorry if I'm passing some other stuff that might interest you. Go back over some videos and you'll find all the other stuff that I have here. This is my beautiful colony of Yumbao. Mm -hmm. They're pretty good too, nice and friendly. They'll come up to you. Little granddaughters, they love uh, getting some flakes and sticking under there and they'll come right up to you. They spawn. Even 15 degrees, these will spawn. Yeah, they've been great for me. I brought these probably three years ago from up Queensland. Um, brought six of them. Got three males, three females. Been lucky. Never lost a one. Never had an issue with them, and they just spawn all the time. Uh, so, what do we got here? We've got uh, my butterfly telescope. So that's a black butterfly telescope. That one with the red eyes there holds the um, panda gene because for about two years it was a panda and then it went white. So I'm, I'll put that black one in there with these and see if we'll bring something back out. And there's some couple of nice calicos down there. Sorry, I probably should have turned off the... Uh, oh, I might be able to do it right there. That's a bit better. Oh, yeah. There's some beautiful ones there. Calicos are more a dragon eye. And people say, oh, what's the difference? Dragon eye is a little bit shorter, stubbier body, and their eyes protrude a more bulbish than the butterfly telescope. That's the difference between dragon eye. A lot of people say dragon eye butterfly telescope is exactly the same. They're not. It's slightly a little bit shorter body and their eyes are a lot more bulbier, hence the name Dragon Eye. Uh, not a lot happening in this one because I've lost some of these over a period of time. These are huge pearl scales and honestly that's fitting the size of the palm of your hand. They're deep down there, that's 500 mil water. So, no problem. Probably a bit. Uh, this one's 700 litres in here, so that's a fair way down. Now they are huge, and I've only got three, one smaller one. Um, I do have to get more, but all good things come to he who waits. So, let's come around here. That tub has other fish in it that we're not talking about today. But this one here had black moors. So I'll show you where I've taken them. So the black moor babies have been selected out, the ones I want. And I've got rid of uh, some that I didn't want. So the mop will come from there to here. Roughly around a month they'll sit in here. And as I said, I'll take you over the other side in a minute. This was a cross. They were in here. Same thing, roughly about probably about oh, yeah, a month roughly and they sat in there and um, that was a cross between Roukens, Pearl Scale and Yumbau and these were both Roukens tubs. Now I've emptied this one out because I need this tub uh, from babies and what's left in there so what I'll do is I'll put them in here 
because I had two, because I had two spawns going. So, so what I will do is I've taken the bigger babies out and I've taken them out the other side. Now, if I find any smaller babies in there that still look okay in that, I actually leave them in there because they, they're, not, they're too small to eat the eggs of the next mop. And what they'll do, they'll have a second life of being able to kick in and grow a little bit more until eventually, if they don't, they'll be culled out of the system eventually. This is going to be a bit harder down here, but we've got a torch. Yes, I do have. Might be a bit harder to see, but uh, here we go. Right down here, these are my lovely Ryukans that have spawned. There's the babies. Never had a lot of luck with Ryukans. We've got a made up Queensland, he'll probably watch this later. There you go, Mick, he's been very successful with Ryukans. Not so good with the Arandas. I've always been good with the Arandas, but not so good with the Ryukans. But there is loads in there, and I'm very excited about that because I really want to try to get some long fin ones back because I love the long fin, long tailed Ryukans. Look very nice, very similar to Lock of Veil tail. And what do we got here? They're deeper. Now these are Arandas. So. As I said, they, they have only been in there a couple of weeks, so they've got a few more weeks. And I don't care, if, if they take a little bit longer to grow up, well, I'll leave them in there. I'm in no rush. As I said, then I go from the powder, then I go to your, like your frozen food, and then you go to... I can show you out here while we're out here. I've got a um, 0.05 food. It's just great for guppies, but fantastic for goldfish fry. It really is, and it's from that company we're going to talk about soon. So what have we got here? Oh, a bit harder. There's some over there. Oh, there you go, Aranda spawn. And while we're here, I'll just show you that food. It is really good. It's 05. There it is there. So I'll throw that into fish that we're not going to talk about today. But as soon as I'll show you the size that I'm about to uh, release out here. So this is going to be my Rogans. Don't know if you can see because I can't see from the glare, but you might be able to. So they're about to get released out. They were a dozen or more that I selected out. As I said, there's some more younger ones in there, but I'll let them go a little bit longer and we'll see how we go. Now, they're at the perfect age to be starting to be fed that uh, 0.05 now. Right, now these are my, what I class the X ones. They are going in there that I've selected out. And once again, they're the perfect size for that food. Maybe a little bit of Daphne and stuff like that too. Put these on, stop the bloody dragonflies. I need to get more of that type of stuff. Stop the dragonflies. And what do we got? The black more babies. And they will get released into there. And that perfect size for that 0.05 food now. And there you go. So they will go in there. Right. That's been emptied out because that will take some babies soon out here. And so once they get big enough, they go to the next stage, which is over here. As you see, there's heaps in there. And what I do there, and what I do is, a nice black more down there. I will take them, check them out when they're five centimeters. If I like them, if I think they're gonna be a really good looking fish, I keep them for myself as future breeders. If I do not, the next grey will be sold. Um, and then the next grade down, I'll show you, they get put in here with, if there's any single tails and that, and they get sold off cheaply. Too many people get rid of single tailed fancy fish. Don't put them back in with your pure stock because it will stuff your pure line up. Get them out, yes, but sell them to people that haven't got much money and just like a couple of fish. All right, don't, 
there and some of them get a huge big long trail train, train on them and, and absolutely bloody beautiful what's in here I am doing an exercise that I want I've got some long tailed fantails in here and there's some actual select oh, what the hell that fish come from it must have come down through from the pipe some uh, and there's some black moors four selected black moors for future breeders so they'll be taken out and taken in the main system next year because you've got to do that you've got to replace them every now and then because you lose them every now and then like i lost a big dad here a while ago um and so yeah so i'm planning on getting a couple of real long-tailed fantails and crossing them with a couple of selected ryukans because they're very similar shape and see if i can get a real long tail on them oh there they are thought they're waiting to be fed i'll get a bit of feed while i'm out here in here a mosh of bumpkins i normally don't keep single tail but so many people come out here when they buy fish and, and, they, and they don't have a lot of money and they often go, oh, have you got any else? you got any single tail or anything like that? And half the time I go, to go, oh, no, sorry. But so I decided to keep some shabumpkins, not comets, shabumpkins, just so, you know, you can, you can sell to the kids for a few bucks. Now, this is this 0.05 food. Have a look at this. It's just a perfect size. Absolutely perfect. Tell you what there is and he just doesn't let me get it out there is a huge big aranda in there somewhere and every time i try to get it out it goes in behind there and i can't get it out without dismantling everything so it's been living a pretty good life out here should have been sold off ages ago but it keeps eluding me so all right then i reckon that's enough waffle for me so if you want to watch any of my videos on the other fish and stuff that i have feel free if not, please like, subscribe and share and let me know if you like this uh, content because it really does help the algorithm and it helps me. And as I said, I've got a bit of a partnership coming up soon, a bit of a sponsorship, so it'll help that to promote that and there might even be a code for some little bit uh, cheaper fish food for yourself and I can vouch for it. It's absolutely brilliant. All right, this is Jeff from Goldfish with Ghost of Crimes uh, leaving you now and... Uh, I'll catch you in the next one.